How did your whole homelessness start? Where did it start? Well, I believe it started when I lost my family. When? Uh, four years ago, when I lost my brother and my mother, my uncles. All at once? All in a matter of two months time. Oh my God. How long have you been actually living outside on the street? Three and a half years. Where? Where, where do you sleep? Um, underneath porches and abandoned houses, um, railroad tracks. It's a little bit past two o'clock in the morning. Most people have gone to bed. It's cold, 38, 39 degrees, give or take. Our colleague Phil has gone to bed. He's been asleep now for a while. But uh, I'm just trying to keep walking around, moving, staying warm. I've added three more layers on top of where I started, and I can still feel the cold air. We're with Jose and Jocelyn. Jocelyn. All right, both of you uh, know homelessness. You know the feeling because you've been there. How long have you been homeless? About now, the past four or five months. Together? Yes. Why, why don't you have a home? Why don't you have a place to stay? Well, living paycheck to paycheck, I got into an accident. My license was suspended. I got into an accident, and now just due to that without having my license, I, I can't work right now. It's too bad. So what you're saying is you don't have money, so you don't have a place to stay. Right. So where are you staying? Well, we've been staying in the bus stop, like a market basket. You mean in that little Stand plastic yeah. uh, booth there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been sleeping in there yeah. at night? On beds. the benches, yeah. yeah. On the benches? Mm -hmm. You must be... Really? Yeah. How would you describe living on the streets? It sucks. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. I would do anything to have my family back as whole, as one, whatever it would take. What, what, it, what will it take to bring your family back? A job. That's what it's all a about, job. is a job? A job. Yeah somebody to actually give me the chance. You know? Let me ask you, what do you think is going to be the solution to your homelessness? I think the solution to my uh, homelessness would be stop, one, stop drinking. For two, get on a good foot with yourself and be real with yourself. And for three, always stay positive about what you're going to do for the next couple of times around. Because, you know, some, you can only go around so many times yeah, before yeah. you mess it all up. Rodney, do you think your alcoholism is partly to cause for your homelessness? Most definitely. Would you say that drugs and alcohol are a large part of your homelessness problem? No. We, we got clean before any of that yep. even happened. And that, that's what sucked when we were using, sad to say. We had everything you can freaking think of. Car, house, money, food. Kids. Now, now, now that we went clean, we have no help from nobody. You, you, don't, you don't blame sobriety for that, do you? No, no definitely not. No, not at all. We're, we're better definitely being not. sober. I mean, we're, we're noticing that now being homeless, we can go ahead and survive off for 25, 30 bucks a day. Do you so, guys cry yourself to sleep? Have you yeah. ever cried yourself yes. to sleep? Isn't that the worst feeling? It really is. When you think you're having a bad day. The worst in the world is going to that visit every Thursday to see my son. And, we have and he looks at me and says, Mommy, go home. And you know that you have to walk out of that door. And we your son's no going to watch you walk away from him. And they don't let him follow you and you can't take him home with you. How bad is homelessness here in New Bedford? Are there a lot of your friends who are homeless? How yeah. big is the problem? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of my friends uh, that are very much homeless. I wish everybody in um, New Bedford the best. The only reason why, because we all hurting. If you could write a little post-it note and leave it on the sugar shaker on the breakfast table for your son, what would that note say from you? From me, that I love him and everything I do is for him and his sister. In my world. <laughs> I love you and I'm trying to get you home as fast as I can. And I'm doing the best I can. Let me ask you this. If you were going to write a book about homelessness, what would you title that book? By myself. About 3 a.m. It's cold. I'm gonna try to get some sleep.
can you tell me from from the best of your memory the toughest night the longest night you ever had spending outside that stone storm I woke up underneath a whole bunch of snow I had no blankets I just had a coat a hoodie gloves and a hat on and I was so frozen that I might couldn't feel my toes, my fingers. And I went to the soup kitchen and I got me a hot cup of tea. And that cup of tea was the most delicious, warmest thing that I had. And I don't know, it was just amazing. this easy. This is a serious problem that we need to take care of. Well, it's about 6.30 in the morning. Made it through the night. I'm absolutely frozen. It was an experience like no other. And it dropped to to a good 35 degrees. When I woke up, the field was frozen over. It was about 85% humidity throughout the night. On top of that, everything got soaking wet. The sad part is, it's not cold enough to open up the shelters. So there are people out there right now who are living in these temperatures, in these conditions, with nowhere to go. As cold as I am right now, it is uncomparable to what these people go through. And unless something changes, people are going to be stuck living in these conditions. We need to help them. I urge you to help them, please. Not all homelessness comes from drugs and alcohol. We all have bad luck. Riseupforhomes.com I will never forget tonight.